Hi. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cedric and I'm an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTuber. It's been a bit since I was able to do a reaction and I apologize for the wait there. Uh, I was traveling obviously with the holidays and I had shot a bunch of reactions before that, but then uh, what all happened? I got back, I was working on a movie and then uh, that got shut down because of the pandemic. Um, and then booked another movie and then I made a YouTube video while I was working on that because I ended up being the cinematographer on that, which was really, really exciting. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to share that with you guys and you can see some of what I talk about with uh, different frame choices and, and different camera moves that can, you know, where you place the camera that can help inform character and inform story. And that's very exciting. So I'll be sharing more when that happens. I have no idea what that timeline is. Uh, all I know is I did it and uh, I was really happy with it. and. Um, now I'm back. So it took me a little bit to recover. There's a lot of overnight shoots and long days. So um, I'm I'm back in, in a place where I can kind of uh, efficiently do this. Uh, I am back to filming starting at the end of next week. Um, well, this week, I guess. I don't know when this is coming out either. But uh, again, like you guys are patient. You know the drill. Um, you got to work and stuff. But I so appreciate you all coming back and uh, it's been a bit since we've been able to do a BTS video. I don't know if you guys saw my Spotify rap that I tweeted out uh, or I put it on Instagram too on my story, but uh, BTS was my number two band behind Andrew Lloyd Webber. And to be fair, I did an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical last year, so I listened to a lot of Sunset Boulevard uh, to get kind of used to the music when you have that tool. That's something I like to use. So really, they, they were my most listened to band. So I'm not kidding about how much I really like them. They're fantastic. So today we are going to do uh, an analysis and reaction of BTS Blue and Gray on MTV Unplugged. Now I have to uh, have some full disclosure here. I thought a couple weeks ago when I was doing another reaction, I thought that BTS had a Blue and Gray music video out. Um, what it actually was, was a fairly well-made uh, fan video using clips from uh, the Golden Closet films and, uh, oh my gosh, Life Goes On. So it was kind of edited together using that. It was pretty well edited, and um, so I was kind of tricked by that. So I'm familiar with the song, uh, but I've never seen this performance. I've never heard them do it live. So it's still going to be a first-time reaction, but I, I have heard the song before. Uh, and, of course, I do want to do the Golden... The, mm, I do want to do the Golden Closet films. Uh, again, I, I've seen clips from them, I haven't seen them, so it's still going to be a fresh analysis. I'm still excited to see Jungkook's uh, actual approach as a filmmaker, as a, as a visual storyteller, um, outside of Life Goes On, which I absolutely adore that music video. So I'm excited to break this down. I'm going to probably have to put a lot of bars over this. I know MTV blocks things, which is, again, 100% their right to do. I'm not going to um, complain about that, not one bit. But I am probably going to have to put some stuff over this so that they'll allow, to, allow it to stay up. And uh, again, if you want to see it without that, feel free to, uh, to look up the video and, and give MTV the view as well. Before we jump in, I just want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for making it possible for me to do my auditions and write my screenplays. I just started a new screenplay literally three days ago. Uh, so that's really, really exciting. Obviously, we've had a blizzard here. I shoveled a lot of snow yesterday. I'm very sore today. We've had a bit of a blizzard, and today's also the AFC Championship. So for any of you that follow the NFL, I'm a big Bengals fan. By the time you watch this, you know what happens. But I'm really, really nervous. My palms just got sweaty thinking about it. Uh, the Bengals are one game away from the Super Bowl. So I'm really, really excited about that. So after I do these reactions, that's it for the day. I won't be able to do anything else. I got to focus on the game. So, <laughs> so that's where we're at. 21 yards! McPherson. Oh, my Cincinnati God. oh my God! is heading to the Super Bowl! And they did it! They beat Mahomes at home! Wow! Joe Burrow! No. Yeah, and also, I got a new bookcase, so I was able to kind of spread my books out because I got a bunch of books for Christmas, so a little bit of a different setup in here. I was getting a little cluttered, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, okay, hey, let's jump into the reaction. Here we go, BTS, Blue and Gray. Nice. 
Someone call me, save me, please. 지친 하루에 하면 숨은. We'll get to you in just a sec, Jungkook. Uh, first. The vocal there from V is fantastic. V has this really, really cool quality to his voice where he kind of holds the note right back here. Where's my angel? It's almost a rock tone to an extent. If you think back on, um, I guess the first song that comes to mind is Hinder's Lips of an Angel. It's really good to hear your voice. And it's obviously not that heavy, um, but it's a really cool tone for him to put on and it works really well for something like this. To talk about the camera work here, the opening shot, they're letting in a lot of light into the camera, and what that does is kind of isolates him. Now what's interesting is a lot of times shadows are not black. We perceive them as being black, but what they actually are is more of a light blue, because when, when you're not taking in sunlight, what they're more often reflecting is the blue sky. And so a lot of times you'll see exteriors uh, and they actually have to color grade the shadows down as black versus blue. Um, just a little fun fact. But the idea of blue and gray within the song, on the opening shot when they did the color grade, kept the light on V enough that you could see him. He's not fully silhouetted. So there's a blue-gray tone to him right there. Of course, with the green, this makes it a very interesting color palette right off the bat. White, gray, and blue. And green, of course. Uh, also, we're in this beautiful set that they have with uh, the exposed brick here that's painted white and then on the other side what looks like some sort of cement or drywall and then this field up in the middle of it with bottles coming out. So there's this mixture of uh, wilderness and society. There's It's a mixed space, a mixed place. And um, thinking about obviously with the pandemic and everything going on, this idea of mixing these spaces up uh, and, and letting all this light in and being reflected by it. Uh, I'm really fascinated by how they're playing with shadows, how they're playing with light in this space. So I, I really like that. I love the texture on his costume. I've talked a lot about texture on costumes. It pops on camera and look at with the light flooding from behind him as he's walking forward, every single you know fray on that on that jacket, uh, I guess it's really more of a cardigan, is popping out into the light and enhances his silhouette and makes it more visually interesting. So there's some really, really intentional costume work being done here. Also, look at the way the shadows are playing, like right where I paused. You can see the lines that they're creating on screen, vertical lines, horizontal lines. They're always keeping it visually interesting and giving us a visual anchor with the way the camera's moving. Okay, uh, now let's hear Jungkook's beautiful voice. <laughs> nice close-up. The way he walks into the shadow. Mm. I love this song. I really love this song a lot. Uh, one of my favorite things about about Suga is his rhythm and the way that he approaches the rhythms in his songs. There's a lot of rapid fire and then pulling it back really quick and then going back to it. And he just... There's something so easy to listen to about the way that he crafts his his sections of songs. The way they punch in, so he's walking back and forth, up and down, and we start on it looking fairly wide. They're on a really wide angle lens on the opening shot of this whole thing, which makes it look bigger. Now as the song's progressing, it's starting to look like the space is smaller, and I don't think they're moving the walls or anything. I think it's legitimately, they're using the camera to make it look, oh, we're in this big, wide, mixed world. Now it's getting smaller as they go and as people are moving into it, it's continually getting smaller. And again, if we're talking about allegories for the world we're in right now, the world is expanding. Look at the internet, right? The world is expanding, but also getting smaller. And there is a claustrophobia to that and also a beauty in it. Everything's just playing differently. The way that, you know, Jungkook, with, with walking away from the camera, which is a unique thing to do in a performance video, in a live performance, you always hear theater directors, especially in high school, say, don't turn your back on the audience, assuming, of course, you're in a regular proscenium stage. So I'm talking about, if you're watching a musical, right, 
uh, the idea of the fourth wall. So there's the box that they're all standing in, and then there's the wall and the audience. Sort of like what we're doing right now. I have the room back here. You guys have the screen. You're the audience, right? So this is my fourth wall. There's other kinds, like a thrust stage, where you've got audience seated on, on uh, three of the four sides, or theater in the round where it's all in a circle. Thank you very much. You have to think of it as a proscenium, so break in the fourth wall. And theater directors will always say, don't walk away from the audience because they won't be able to see you. They may not be able to hear you as well. Um, I don't like that rule. I get why we have it for a lot of high school theaters because uh, it's it's important to remember, like to cheat out to the audience and to be seen. But people do walk like that, and I think it's okay to do that, and it can create some really beautiful moments. And the way Jungkook walked away on his own close-up and walked into the shadows, and they let in just enough light. They opened up the aperture just enough, right? It's not like it's big jumps in how much light is coming in, but if you notice between the shots, there's a different amount of light in different shots, and it doesn't bother you because they're telling the story with eyes, and that's what makes it good, right? It's all about finding out what rules you have to follow to tell the story you're trying to tell. So this is all about each of them as individuals, but as each of them come into the space, they're all interacting with it differently. V is already there. Jungkook walks in, immediately walks toward the light, and then turns away from it and ends up in shadow as he sings his part. Uh, Sugar comes in near the camera and then walks all the way down this path, which we now see just how thin this room is, and he's kind of pacing up and down, almost like a, like a lion at the zoo, right? Pacing up and down, sort of this confined, making full use of the space, expanding what we're able to see, but really showing how much smaller it is. This is wonderful blocking and the camera's enhancing that. So then we punch into a close up and we're getting this really, really intimate part of the lyrics as well when that's happening. So this is wonderful, wonderful cohesion for a live performance. <laughs> It's a great line. I guess that's wood, not brick. Sorry. Tight focus. Ugh. I just... Oh, Jimin is so good. So when he comes in there, uh, listen to it real quick here, right? Listen to it again. I am singing by is adding that to it and he kind of does this thing where he kind of yodels off on a lot of notes but he's adding texture to it to emphasize this idea of singing by himself and it also is just such a cool sound he's got such a beautiful pure tone that he can mess with it like that I just love his voice it's so unique so unique also Jin comes in with his clear tone the idea of Jin picking up right off of sugar is really really powerful with the way that he presents um, his own voice in opposition to Suga's and with what Suga was, was talking about in his own section. And then dropping down to V's beautiful husky voice. Look at the shadows! Look at that! Blocking so good! So blocking is so important in performance, to have them all walking into this frame. Now they're all coming together. We've seen them as individuals. Also that harmony, that da -da 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 -da. that's high and hard. And he just, it's so effortless for Jimin and his voice. And then pairing him and V, you've got such a nice, warm, low voice with such a beautiful, high, clear tone. And it, th there's a separation there on the line, it's not okay, right? With what they're singing about, the separation, the octaves between these voices, the difference in tones, the idea of them being together but also apart and separate is really present there. I'm also in love with this set design. The bottles uh, coming up through the plants create beacons of light. They create things that are moving for us to look at, little anchors for us visually. It's really beautifully shot. Also, really tight focus on them keeps a lot of this out of focus and kind of keeps a sense of mystery and separation with the world. I like the window behind it too. This all feels contained. Reminds me of the visuals of Station Eleven, if you haven't seen it on HBO Max. It's my favorite novel. 
They did a really good adaptation of it. Highly recommend you check it out. <laughs> That's all on Steadicam. Nice. Oh, I love that suit, Jay. Oh, I love that suit, Jay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put in a section here from my first reaction to this song where I talked about RM and I got a little bit off track because I thought his line was, I don't believe in a God that's called certainty. Uh, and I interpreted it a little bit differently, but I still want to talk about that because I think RM is a very, very thoughtful and intelligent writer, and I want to talk about what I had. So here's a clip from that reaction, which uh, is not going to be public. Yeah, so he said, I don't believe in God, that's called conviction. And uh, first of all, yeah, not believing in God is conviction as much as believing in God is. But he said, I prefer a large gray area. And one thing that I've worked on, as most of you know, I'm a person of faith, I'm a Christian. But a lot of the past two years for me has been realizing that in my belief in God, I've learned to, he said, I dance upon this city. I've learned to dance in the gray area, uh, to dance in the gray area of defining God, because I don't really know. And I think that that's correct, um, especially the Christian God. Like, you don't know. You really don't. You know certain things, sure, what we do know. But he is so intellectual in his breakdown of why he doesn't. And to me, as someone who does... I, I struggle with a lot of what he's talking about there, and I feel validated in my faith because of that. And I think the past two years have prompted both of those things and both of those philosophies and schools of thought of leaning into the unknown, um, whether that unknown, whether you define that as God or not, uh, and, and functioning within that and this idea of how can you know enough and, and can you know enough? No course not. So we're all just doing our best to understand, um, especially over the last two years, to understand the unknown and what it means to be human and to be alive and to be a part of something greater. And uh, talking about I dance upon this city and on rainy days we're together. And, and I guess for me, like that is um, as much a sense of the eternal as what I have in my faith. And, and Ultimately, it doesn't matter to me how you really define it. I think he's touching on something really, really powerful there. I feel like that was a whole ramble that didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and I, I might get some comments of people being like, you just you talked like a maniac for three minutes. Sure, I probably did. But I there's just something really powerful about that verse from him and about his um, very philosophical undertaking to try to grapple with things and... Um, this conviction that he has. And uh, I just really, um, I'm a big fan of his brain and of his, of his way of trying to, trying to understand the world that, uh, that he's in. So anyway, cool. Uh, also look at how they changed the color grade now. So it went from warm tones with this uh, white and yellow kind of thing. Now it's actually literally blue and gray with green being the fill in in between. That's really nice because green still presents the concept of life, right? It's a natural life-giving color. And so that's still very present in the frame and in the visuals of what we're seeing. To have J-Hope come in in a wonderful suit, by the way. He looks great. Uh, coming in with his low kind of... He's got a really fascinating voice because it's not really aggressive. It's very round. He's got a... Like, I've never heard someone rap like him. And I really like his style. And it just fits the suit. And for him to come in on this song with, with what he's talking about in a gray suit on the color grade change being on him, really nicely done. Look at that shot. Uh. Uh. What a nice way to add that. So now he's fully silhouetted, light beaming in behind him. Uh, no, 
this ground feels so heavy I am singing by myself He added that little trill I'm singing by Beautiful, and I don't think he does it on the recording. Maybe he does. You guys probably heard it a lot more than me. But what a beautiful switch up there. It adds this little bit of heartbreak to the note. Just a little bit of emotion. It doesn't overdo it. It's a really subtle way to do it, but man, what a powerful addition. In that far future, if I smile, what a line. I'll say that's how it was. Uh, Look at the way the light's playing in now. It's all white light. See the way it's framing them right on the noses and everything? Look at the mixture of hope and grief and loss. Pain. Ugh. Resolve. Gosh, what an ending shot. I think lyrically that's my favorite song from them. I don't think I realized that the first time through. I mean, just it's poetry. You know, all the different themes that they play up in here, the different emotions, the line... Um, maybe someday in the far future, I'll look back and say, that's how it was. I mean, think about that. Like, we are constantly living through history, but especially in a pandemic, like, these are things that future generations are going to read about. And we have to be like, yeah, that's just how it was. Like, we were inside for like two years, and it was wild, right? And there were all these world events happening, and we watched them from the window and from the computer screen, and we were also a part of them. And it is just such a different time. I mean, the world is changing right now. And um, this song really, I think, addresses that and the loneliness and also the human connection of that. Like it's a time of loneliness and a time of togetherness. Um, and I don't really understand what the, and I think there's going to be studies on how this plays out sociologically uh, and in our interpersonal relationships. I mean, how it's, I think it's changed the human race, I would assume. Like the way that we interact has changed forever as a result of the last two years. And maybe that was always bubbling under the surface, but it's there now. And I think that this song really kind of addresses the um, the fear and the anxiety of that, but maybe also adding that degree of hope and of, you know, maybe good can come from that. And I think it's really easy to apply a balm of, oh, good will come from this to, to trauma and things that happen. And it's been a really awful couple of years. So I don't want to say like, oh, this was meant to happen. So X good thing can happen. Um, I don't subscribe to that way of thinking um because i think it's important to just exist in the grief of it as well but i do think that this carries with it a sense of melancholy hope does that make sense it's very station 11 in the way that it presents like survival is insufficient and this idea of i remember damage i'm just gonna start quoting the novel now but uh <laughs> that even through everything we've had to go through that we will carry on and figure out what is ahead because that's how it is. And I just love the philosophy of these lyrics. I can tell that this song means a ton to them. The shot of Jimin where he's like almost in tears, like all of them present such different emotions. And I think that that's very personal. I think all of them have handled this in different ways. They're, they're all pretty different guys. And to see all their personalities shine through in this performance, not, I mean, you see it in Dynamite and Butter and some of those others, but to see it shine through in the way that it does in this is really, really great. Um, I think that's, I think that's all I've really got for you on this. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. What a beautiful performance and what a beautiful song and beautiful thoughts behind it. And um, I just, I hope all of you are taking care of yourselves and, kind of take the message of this, whatever this song means to you. And I think it's one that means a lot to different people. Whatever it means to you, I hope you take that to heart. But in the meantime, uh, please take care of yourselves and drink a lot of water. I've got my water bottle right there and I'm going to drink some of it right now. So please drink lots of water, uh, you know, fix your posture. I've been trying, did you guys notice me auto-correcting my posture throughout? Uh, so fix your posture, drink water, please get some sleep. That's what I've been working on doing. And I will see you next time. But until then, but I...